fantastic. Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome back to my Open TTD tutorial series. If you haven't seen the previous episodes, go check them out, especially the Railways ones, because this one builds on top of the ones we've seen previously. So in recent episodes, we've looked at the up and down line way of working in these more advanced tutorials. And then we looked at different signals you can use, and we looked at the types of stations. Today, we'll be looking at junctions and depots. So let's have a look at that. But first, I had a question. A couple of episodes ago we had this situation here where we had some entrance and exit signals around a station and I got asked by a viewer um, if two trains are in the station will a third train well what will it do and the simple answer is with this setup it will get stuck at the junction if the stations aren't available now we fix this in the tutorial by moving to path signals but what if you don't want to move to path signals well this is what you do what you can do is if you don't want these to be path signals you can remove this exit signal over here and then remove these ones to here put the ones going into the platform as exit signals and the one coming out of your junction block as a standard signal what this does is it forces this entrance signal to only act upon the two exit signals at the station and this will fix the problem or you could use path signals as we did in the tutorial Right, on with today's. Now in this advanced tutorial, we've already looked at a couple of simple junctions. So let's have a quick look at them now. Here we have a T-junction that needs to be made. What we did is we brought our T-junction track up to the main line and just said, well, let's make sure that this line can go this way. Um, let's remove that. It doesn't need to cross over. Uh, and let's make sure it can go this way. And then we go, oh, well, we'll make sure this line can go this way and we'll make sure it can go that way. And that's it. You have indeed done your junction. So we put all your entrance signals in like this. And there we go. Entrance signal. That's an exit signal. Entrance signal. So all your entrance signals are in. And then make sure you've got your exit signals in. So put exit signals in like that, like that. And we can just put some exit signals in there now take I usually take away the closest exit signal so that the junction doesn't get blocked and there we go um, that is the simple junctions we've been using and I did explain a little about them in previous episodes so I'm not going to explain too much about it there for a crossover it's pretty much the same sort of situation okay you put all your lines going everywhere so this one wants to go that way it wants to go straight on and it wants to go down here and this track wants to go uh, over here and then that way and you end up with just something that looks like this where every single segment a track is filled in and these points again you put your entrance signals in one there one there one there, one there, and then you put some signals down, depending on the length of your trains. Now, if you've got length three trains, then you leave a gap of three, and then put your signal in for your exits. Okay, leave a gap of three and put a signal in. That means if a train is waiting to exit a certain parts of the junction, it's not actually blocking the junction itself. Uh, one, two, three, and we'll put one on the corner there. So that is pretty simple too. Another simple thing you might want to do is put a, uh, a single direction T-junction in. So uh, here we've allowed the trains to go in all directions. They're coming from direction C and they can go in direction A or B. Okay, but if we want, for example, we've got a particular special service and it doesn't need to go in A or B. Maybe it just needs to go in the B direction. We can do it a little bit differently. Let's say that this line coming up to the main line, line C, only wants to go in direction A. Well, that makes things more simple. What we can do is we can put our line in like that. And one of our lines, now you can see, let's make sure we get our directions right. So let's just put some signals in. There we go. Let's put some signals in there as well. So uh, this train that is coming towards the main line, it only wants to head off down the main line in that direction. And when a train's coming back, it only wants to come back in, in this direction here. So you can just do that, and that's it. It's simple as that. And you've got your junction. Just make sure you've got some signals going into the junction and some signals coming out as well. So let's just get rid of that. 
Yeah, there we go. So you only actually make the train go in the one direction it needs to go. So in this particular example, our trains can go between A and C and back again, but the ones coming from C can't go to B, and ones from B can't go to C. But uh, you may need that in some situations where only trains need to go in certain directions, and it helps with the flow and forcing trains of where they need to go. These sorts of junctions are okay for when you start off, but they can get clogged up quite easily and they're not very efficient. So let's do some tweaking and see if we can make them a little bit better. The T-junction is relatively straightforward to do, and there's a number of different ways of doing it. I'm going to show you one which is quite compact, quite easy, and most of all, is quite cheap. Now, I like to use tunnels rather than bridges wherever I can. Bridges can have speed limits where tunnels do not. So let's put a tunnel in. I'm going to press Q to bring up the land tool. I'm going to put the land down just a little bit here and just a little bit there as well. I'll press T to pop a tunnel in and there's our tunnel and connect it up. Now, this allows one of the tracks to go under the main line and what we'd want to do with that is to bring it up and round so that we can connect it up. So, uh, the next thing we need to do is put a bridge in. So if we get a bridge tool and we bring the bridge over like this, fastest bridge we can. I'm just going to make the bridge transparent so we can see what we're doing a little bit more. And then with our land tool, we're just going to take the corner of this out here so we can put a corner piece of track in here and bring our track from the tunnel this way. And then we're going to bring the track from the bridge that way. Okay. So what this does, it allows the trains to get on the opposite side of the line without crossing the actual main line that you're connecting to. Okay, so trains coming from C, let's put some signals in. So let's say they're coming from C in this direction here. Um, want to be able to go towards B so they can have a nice piece of track to do that. And if trains want to go from A to C, they can do that this way. So we do a nice piece of track because they come off the main line and just connect straight up. There's no way that they're crossing over there. So if we just put some signals in. Let's remove that one. There we are. Now here uh, you've got a similar sort of situation, let's put some signals in there going into the junction block, there we are, and remove, there we are. So why do we use a bridge and a tunnel? The reason why I use a bridge and a tunnel is because the lines need to cross over. If a train is coming down this line from the direction of C and wants to go to direction B, it can do down here. If it wants to go to A, it needs to end up over here on the opposite side heading north and uh, well that's not north that's west in open TTD um, so it needs to be heading over here and to get there it has to go along the line it has to go under this or over this main line somehow and then head off in the A direction now you could just do that but the problem here is is that our C line um, also needs to be able to uh, come in from B so if we're coming up from the east from B we need to be able to go somehow cross the line that's here and then round to C and that's what we're doing with the bridge. So if I just connect these up here like this and like this and tidy it up by removing extra parts you can see that now in this junction the trains can get from any of the four, uh, three points to any of the three points without crossing other lines and that's the important part it's like Ghostbusters with junctions the more efficient they are you do not cross the lines so there we have it. There is a basic junction. And how did I know where to put the signals in? Well, what I do is I analyse each little tiny bit of the junction. So I'm looking at these three little bits of line that come in here. And I, what I do is I look at the, uh, the... I treat this as a tiny little junction. And you put signals going into the entrance. So we've got signal going in there and a signal going in there. And it comes out here. Uh, same here. You've got a, uh, a line coming out here, a line coming out there and the signal going in there. So you treat them all as little tiny junctions and put signals on the in. Look, uh, we've got a little tiny junction here, we've got a line going out there, signal coming in there, signal coming in there, in, out, out, in, in, out. Same over thing over here, in with a signal, out, out. And if there's big spaces in the middle, you might want to put some extra signals in like that. 
So I always work things out with these junctions as I go along. This is quite a moderately complex junction uh, for a beginner, um, but it does work fairly well. It's fairly compact and fairly simple to do. Let's just have a look at that with the bridge not made transparent. There we are, that's what it looks like with the bridge. Now, there is a way you can do this with multiple tracks, and we'll look at that sort of thing later. Let's see how much easier this is to do if you only want your trains to go in one direction like we looked at earlier. So, let's let's fix this line up here to work to go in one direction. Well, it's actually really easy. If we just remove this piece of track that crosses the main line and put ourselves a little dip in like this, um, we can put a tunnel underneath like that, bring it up, round, and just connect it up to the main line. Now, if you want it to be a little bit more symmetrical, you can take it off the main line at the same place that it joins up here, and just remove this bit there, and that's it. You have a relatively efficient way of joining tracks from this side line onto the main line. Again, making sure you've got signals at the in points. In point, that's an out point, so let's get rid of that signal. Um, and there we go. So that is actually quite simple. And again, the key thing here is not to cross the streams. Make sure your railway lines don't cross in the junctions. You only have parts where they can splinter off and merge. So here is the, the part where they can merge. Here's where they can splinter off. And they just cross by going under and over. Similar thing here. Now, these sorts of junctions are quite a bit more difficult. Again, you can see the more lines you have, the more complex you end up with. But what we can try and do is make this kind of a little bit easier so let's just start off by getting rid of this mess in the middle joining the main line up and stripping back these lines here now if you want to just copy some junctions without working them out for yourself you can go to the open ttd wiki and look at some designs on there and i actually implore that you do so anyway there's some loads of interesting designs for lots of different scenarios and a lot of them are quite commonly used but what i like to do is develop these sorts of things and work out the best way of doing things for the situation in this particular situation we're going to put tunnels underneath here like this so that our two lines do not cross there we go now, the only problem here is that our lines can't get um, to each other. And what we're going to do is like a very compact clover leaf. Now, the problem is, is that this uh, industry is in the way. So, for demonstration purposes, uh, I'm going to move the industry. That's better. Now we can get on with our example. So, in railway construction, what we can do around here, there's various different ways to do it. And the way that I personally like to do a cross junction like this is with something called a clover leaf. Now, a clover leaf is such called because of the way it looks, not the way it works. So, what we're going to do is the first thing is allow trains to double back on themselves. Now, it sounds a bit weird, but if a train is coming from direction W, we want it to be able to go in direction Y. So, uh, no, d direction Z, sorry, that's where we're going to start, direction Z. So, uh, if a train is going in from direction Z, we want it to be able to go Y. And the easiest way to do that is just with a straight out angle across like this. There we are, straight across angle. But we're not going to do the easy one first, we do the hard ones first. So, we want to go from Z to W. Okay, now to do that, we need to cross the line and go back on ourselves. So we come off the line, we go under the main line from Z, we go round like this, and back onto the main line before the kind of junction. And then we can carry on in the W direction. So that's actually quite easy. So if we're going from Z, we can turn right. So what we need to do now is do all the right turns at the junction. Okay, let's just put those signals in so you can see that. So going into the junction block, we have a signal. Going into that junction block, we have signals there. And there we that's it. That's how we do it. Okay, so that goes in and turns right. Now, if we're at W, we want to be able to turn right as well, but that's an easy one, so we're going to skip that. At X, we want to be able to turn right, which means we'll head off in the Y direction. So for that, again, we put ourselves one of these little uh, things in like this. There we go. Now, um, again, we're just looping around and just having a little bit of a connection and then we can put our signals in. So we do our, let's put our entrance signal in there, our entrance signal in there and there. Brilliant. 
Now all we need to do is add the right turn for the W and the Y direction. And that is again just the same thing, just a bit of track that comes out off here. We can connect them up and we end up with a nice little pattern. Looks quite good, I think. Let's just make sure it's symmetrical. There we go. Clean up and pop our signals in. So we're going into a junction. No, I, oh, 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 wrong way. We're going into a junction here, uh, into a junction there, uh, into a junction there, and there. And we're going into a junction there. That is the inside of the clover leaf done. Now, from any direction, you can turn right. And you can go straight on, obviously, with the trains, the lines that already go straight on. Now we need to do the left turn. That's nice and easy. You just put your track um, on the outside. So like this and like this. And this allows all the trains then to be able to do a left turn. Now every train from every direction can do a left or right turn. So I just like to put a signal in before that and a signal in here as well. There we go. Signal on the exits of all those turns. Let's just remove that duplicate. And there we have it. Every train can go in every direction. So let's see some of these in action then, shall we? Let's get some trains running. And for that, we're going to look at depots. Now, depots are something that we have looked at in the earlier tutorials. We talked about how to get trains from them and so forth. But we didn't really talk about the best ways to place them. When you're starting off, a good way to put a depot is in one of these positions over here near a station. If you put a depot in like this, on this junction, you don't need any more signals and it can act as an escape goat if you get too many trains at this location. And there's no harm in actually putting a depot on the other side as well. This means trains that, go, uh, that are in the platform can choose either depot to go to if the line is busy for the other one. This is an interesting way of doing it and it can cause some clogging though if you want lots of trains to use these depots but as a general rule especially for starting out putting depots at stations like this is perfectly a good way of doing it um, at a larger station like this you may want to put your depots something like this and just connect them up like that the only thing is when you've got depots here um, they need to be able to access the inner platform so you just need to fill in these pieces of track like this well, you don't just want to put depots at station. You, ought to want, you also want to put them along your route. And the easiest way of doing that, of course, is just to plonk them on like this. So we've got a, a stop on the upline and a stop on the downline. But that, again, is not the best way of doing it. And you're best off having the trains actually leave the main line. So let's have a look at that. So the first thing I like to do is place my depot where I want it to be. There, that's where I want my depot. Now I have to work out which direction the train's going. They're coming in one way and out another. Now trains going into a depot will slow down. And if a train going into a depot is slowing down, it can clog up the main line. So what you want is that train to completely exit the main line before going into that depot. So if we're coming down this line here, we want to be able to enter the depot in this direction. And if our trains are three long, we want to give ourselves a clear three squares and then connect to the main line. This allows the train to come off the main line before slowing down and entering the depot. A similar situation with exiting the depot happens. So you want to come out three squares like this and then hit the main line. Now, just for pathing reasons, you may want to fill this in here so a train can just go straight through. Some people like to leave that, some people don't. All we need now is our signals, so we do the same as with our junctions. We look at each individual little part and put signals going into it. So we've got a signal going into this section, and we want signals going into this section. There's the in parts. Yeah. And that's the one of the better ways of putting a depot on a main line. Now there's more complex ways, with priority merges and more lines, but this is the starting point. This is a better thing than just plonking it on the main line. Of course you need one on the other side, so there we go. Uh, I've just replicated exactly the same design, but facing the other direction. So it looks symmetrical, but you've got your entrance, double entrance signals at one end and your entrance, single entrance signal at the other. 
Well, um, that is a easy way of adding them at stations and an easy way of putting them on main lines. We'll look at more complicated ones later. Uh, there are some more that you can do with depots. Uh, you can force trains to go into a depot. Now, to force trains into a depot, uh, what you do is you place your depot down and then remove this piece of track here. So the train has to go into the depot to get down the line. Now this can be a good way of forcing your trains to service regularly, however it can cause pathing problems, because if a train is coming down this line and wants to head towards this station, it can't always pick a route that goes straight through this depot. And there are ways around this. Now the disadvantage with these depots is that you are forcing trains to go in on the main line, and this is going to slow them down. So instead of putting them directly on the main line, you can do the same thing that we used previously by having them come off the main line like this, but um, forcing them to go through by removing this part like I mentioned. However, this allows trains to go along the main part of the line here. That is not really a good way of what we want, is it? So what we do is we bring the depots out by one block, giving ourselves a bit of space, and we put a depot in on both sides. So here I've just brought out the lines that are coming off the main line by one square. If we just place our depot somewhere over here, um, and we can also put one on the main line like this, we can do the same here. So we can put one there and put one on the main line like this. To make it easier, I can make these transparent as well. There we go. If we remove this piece of line here outside the depots, now the train is forced to visit one of the two depots as it comes in. And because the train is forced to visit one of the two depots, the train will choose the line which is not busy. So the first train comes along, chooses depot A, and then as it's going in, it's probably slow. So the next train coming along will go into depot B. Now by the time that the third train comes along, hopefully the other depot has become available again. Now you can make this a little bit more efficient even further by putting an extra depot on the outside like this. Let's have a look at those depots. What that does is it allows one train to go into one depot at the same time another train is coming out another. So this can actually handle three trains moving in and out of depots on the up line and three trains moving in and out of depots on the down line all at the same time, relatively compact. So we've talked about basic junctions uh, in OpenTTD for the up and down line system. Let's see the, all this in action with a load of trains. Okay, so I've got a number of trains going, so let's check out our junctions. First up, the Cloverleaf. Trains going from Z to X. They just go straight through, straight under the tunnel, and straight back. That seems to be working out quite nicely. A small stop by this train here as the other train cleared the Cloverleaf junction. And there's a note on these junctions, they can be built bigger. The bigger the junctions, the more trains can go on them at the same time. This is probably one of the smaller ones. You could probably make it ever so slightly smaller. Um, it's best, if you can, have this space here as long as your trains, okay, on the inside of the clover leaves. If the inside of your clover leaves are at least one train length, then you can fit an extra train in your clover leaf junctions. But as you can see, trains do flow through quite nicely. We've also got trains currently turning right from the X direction over here. So they're sitting here, they're going under the bridge, round like this one just did, and off in the X direction. As they go off in the X direction, they're going straight through this junction here, straight through the uh, T junction. There's no other trains moving on that one yet, but we'll see it more in use later. This one broke down, so we're just going <laughs> to just fast forward a minute whilst we get a few trains going in and out of these stations. There we go. And we now have trains going from A to C on this uh, T-junction here. And you can see how they're just flowing through without touching each other. We've also got ones coming from C to B. And that one is going to be going through down to our cro clover leaf as well. So um, you can see how they're all going in any direction they want to without actually crossing each other's path. So you can see here on the clover leaf. Um, and on the junction above it for the T junction, uh, we've got trains going from A to C. Now we've got a train that appears to be going from Y to W, I think, as well as one that is going from X to Y. Yes, we've got trains going in all sorts of directions, and they're all flowing pretty nicely, apart from a few breakdowns. 
So as they go down the line, they're going to be forced to go into depots. And you can see that that is the situations that are happening here. If we just fast forward a bit, we're going to get a number of trains going in. And you can see how the train chooses which depot it's going to be going in based on what one's currently busy. This is mainly due to the pathing of the train and also the path signal. Uh, we have our trains going off our spur down into our side station there. And you can see that they're being forced into the depot on the way back as well. So if we now just stay here for a little while, we'll be able to see trains going in our depots. Now, if I stop this train here as it's exiting that depot, we'll be able to see how many trains can actually use these depots at once. So train 10 is about to come into this depot system. It sees that this line's busy and it goes into the other line. It goes into this depot, no problem. But as it's coming out, we're going to stop it once again. And we'll see that this other train here goes into this depot at the same time as that one coming out. And yet, so even though we've got three trains stopped in this particular depot block, another train's going to come in and it will still be able to enter this block once we've got it. So oh, have we got another train here? Let's have a look. No, there we go. Now, so we have managed to clog up our trains by stopping these three trains. Uh, but if we let, uh, say, for example, let's let train 11 get out of the way. There we go. So if we let train 10 finish exiting that um, junction there, we'll be able to see that the trains can then follow through and go into its depot. Now you can help this a little bit by placing signals directly after the depots. It's not 100% required, but it does help the flow just a tiny bit. Now, let's uh, unstop that train there and see how some of the other junctions are going along. There we go. So if I just hover here, you'll be able to see our uh, one-way T-junction, our bi-directional T-junction, our cloverleaf and our depots, and all the trains that are snaking along round through our paths. And if I fast forward, you'll be able to see that they are moving along quite nicely. Now, there are a lot of trains on such a small network, and I deliberately did this to make it absolutely as busy as anything. And you can see how they are actually moving around. They are having to wait for each other, but in a more ideal situation, you'll have bigger gaps between your junctions and possibly less trains. If you're getting much more, more trains than this, you probably need more lines, and more lines going to different places. But that is the end of this particular tutorial telling you about these junctions. Now, like I said previously, there are other, other junctions, and you can go check them out on the wiki. But later on in this tutorial series, we'll be looking at even more complex junctions. We'll be looking at what if you have more than one upline and more, one, more than one downline? What if you have two uplines and two downlines, or even more? How can we expand these junctions to make them fit these massive requirements? And also, how can we improve on them by using priority stuff? But for now, these are quite good, and they you work in a large amount of situations. So, enjoy your junctions. Thank you very much for watching. Leave all your thoughts, ideas, and questions down in the comments section of this YouTube video, and I will see you sometime soon. If you want to watch me Let's Play, uh, there'll be a link in the credits to my uh, recent Let's Play, and also there's a link to the rest of the tutorial series, so you can check that out. Well, that's going to be all. Thank you, and goodbye.